Creating a double exposure effect is great, especially if you want to merge two different types of photos together. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my favorite way of how you can create this really cool double exposure effect in your image using Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. So firstly, before we get started, what is a double exposure? Well, before digital cameras were created, photographers used to use film. Now, if you go ahead and take one photo and use the same section of film for another photo, but half expose both, you could create this thing called a double exposure. This is where basically you've got two photos blended into one. You would half expose one, half expose the other, creating a full exposure on the same section of film. Now you could create really cool effects. Grant knew it was a lot more difficult back in the day because obviously photographers needed to use film. If you made uh, any mistakes, you'd have to redo it again and you wouldn't know what you've got until the end result once you've kind of gone into your darkroom. But now, thank goodness, digital technology is here and we can actually do this in post-production. And that's what we're going to be doing today in this Photoshop tutorial. So to create this effect, all you'll need to do is use two photos hence the name double exposure. But what you can do is add in some photos afterwards. And I'll show you how you can manipulate and add even more photos to this effect. But let's just start off with two in this case. So what you'll need firstly is a portrait photo. So I've got this photo here. It doesn't have to be black and white, but in this particular case, I am using a black and white photo. So we've got our portrait photo, and then what you'll need is a landscape photo. So I've got this beautiful landscape photo here with the trees, and uh, it's got kind of a stream running through it with some kind of grass and a meadow in front. So let's go ahead and open up our portrait photo first. So what you want to do firstly is you want to go ahead and actually create a selection of that person. We want to separate that person from the foreground and the background. The best way to do that is basically using the subject selection within Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is got our background here, we're gonna go up to select, and what we're gonna do is just select subject. And Photoshop will do its thing and create basically a really good automatic selection for you. Now, if you want to check to make sure it's done a right job or a good job, what we can do is go ahead and select using the quick selection tool. We want to go up to our select and mask option. You want to make sure that it's done a fairly good job. As you can see, it's missed a little bit of its beard, but to be honest, it's done a very, very good job. Go around its hair. Uh, it's made a less of a good job around here, but you know, that's okay. It is an automatic selection. And what we could do is just go ahead and select like so. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job straight out the bat. Now what we want to do is create a new layer. So in our output section, you can find in the bottom right hand corner, you want to go to selection and you want to drop down to where you can see it says new layer with layer mask. That's really important that you select that. Once you've done that, go ahead and click OK. Now, as you can see, we have got a brand new layer with a transparent background. What we can do now is we can introduce that layer back in again. So we've got our background layer, but as you can see, we've got two layers now. So we've got a foreground and we've got our background. So now let's go ahead and introduce our double exposure. So what we could do is go to our where our layer is. So I've got mine on my desktop. All I'm going to do is drag and drop that onto our new document here. And I'm going to go ahead and click enter. Now, obviously we want it at the front. So what we're going to do is go to our layers panel here and drag it right to the top. Now we also want to make sure, we want to make sure it's covering the entire portrait photo. So what we're going to do is select that, go ahead and click command T, that's our free transform tool. And I'll go ahead and just drag it over the entirety of that person. And I'll go ahead and click enter. Now, as you can see, we can't see the background now. So what we're going to need to do is create a clipping mask. What we do is we're gonna clip this layer to the layer beneath it. So what we're gonna do is go to that layer, right click, and we're gonna go ahead and create clipping mask. That will clip it to our layer. Now, as you can see, because we have made a selection, it has cl clipped it to that selection using that layer mask. So you can see if I press Command T, what we could do is actually move it around within the image, which is pretty cool. But we want that kind of, a little bit of detail showing back up of that person through the photo. So we want a little bit of almost blending. And what's the best way to do that? Using blending modes. So what we could do is go to that layer here, 
drop down from our blending mode options and find one that works for you. I find that lighten or screen seems to work really well with this particular photo combo, but have a look and see what one works best for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I'm gonna go ahead and just move it around a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Command T and I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a little bit larger, a little bit smaller and see kind of what effect I end up with. I quite like these trees kind of appearing over this person's face. So I'm gonna go for something, I'm gonna go ahead and free transform it. I'm gonna go for something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter to confirm that selection. But what I want is I want that person's hair to kind of disappear into the background to where this kind of gray is. Then we can do this by adding a few more adjustment layers. So I'm gonna do is go down to our adjustment layers icon found in the bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna go ahead and select curves. Now we wanna make sure our curves is only affecting that background. So what we're gonna do is right click on that layer. And again, we're gonna go ahead and select create layer mask. So we're only affecting the layer beneath it. So what we're gonna do is go into that curves adjustment layer. We're gonna go ahead and select this button here. So this is selecting our white point. Then we're gonna go ahead and select somewhere around in the hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here. And what it will do is, as you can see, it creates this really cool effect. Now, what you can do is remove that background layer, go ahead to your adjustment layers icon, and I'm gonna go ahead and just select a random color. I'm gonna go ahead and select maybe a slight off-white, go for something like that, and make sure that that is all the way at the bottom. Actually, what I'm gonna do is make it completely white, to make it kind of really blend in. And as you can see, it's created this really cool effect where the sky has completely been washed out, but we've got all of that really nice detail found in the foreground. Now, what you can do is go back into that curves adjustment layer, and you can go and mess around with the values a little bit, add a little bit more contrast, maybe brighten it up a little bit, make it so you're happy with the result. So I'm gonna go for something like so. I don't, what I don't wanna do is make it too kind of HDR, but I think something like this works really, really nicely. Now, you could just leave it like that, and I would be, to be honest, really, really happy with the results. But what I wanna do is add in some birds. Just imagine the birds flying out of this double exposure. I think that will look quite nice. So what I can do is go to our background layer. As you can see, I've got an extra layer here. Just found some birds. Again, the link will be in the description for this particular photo. And what I'll do is drag, and drop that onto this photo here. And what I'll do, I want the birds kind of, I guess, flying out of his head where the kind of trees are. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in those birds there and go ahead and click enter. But as you can see, it hasn't blended into the photo at all. The sky is a little bit of a gray cone and it's not blending into that white. So what can we do? Firstly, we want to remove that gray. Then we want to blend it into the background using our blending modes. So I'm gonna do, go down to our adjustment layers icon found in the bottom right hand corner. Go ahead and select curves, right click on that layer. Again, guys, we wanna create it. So we're just affecting that layer. So we're gonna create a clipping mask, as you can see. Double click on that layer. We want to go ahead and making sure we've got to select our white point. Select an area of the photo that's gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and select something like so. As you can see, got those birds there. Then what we're gonna do is go to that birds layer because we wanna blend that in. We're gonna to go to our blending mode options and we're gonna drop down to, let's try multiply or darken. Which one works best? I think multiply works quite nicely. Let's go ahead and just darken the actual, uh, so we wanna remove this kind of area in the top here. I'm not actually liking that absolutely at all. So let's go ahead and remove that like so. Then let's move those birds into their final position. So let's make them a little bit smaller. Let's put them, let's say about here, I think, and go ahead and click enter. And wow, I'm really, really happy with the results. Now, this particular tutorial was sped up, so let me show you the final result, the one that I'm really happy with. So here is the before, and here is the after. And as you can see, if you spend a little bit of time on it, you can get some really cool effects. And write it down in the comments below if this particular effect worked for you.